go. Welcome back. It's been forever since a coding stream, hasn't it? And you saw what happened last time I tried to do a coding stream. Um, I was explaining how I was trying to fix the OAuth to open authorization login with Lee Chess button for the Relay Chess server. Um, and I got hosted at that time, and I'm like, well, might as well show off what I've got for the Relay Chess site. Um, so that took an abrupt uh, right turn last time, but here, actually, I got one more thing I have to fix first. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry for the misdirection there, but this shouldn't take long, and then we'll be on to trying to get Relay Chess working for authenticated user versus user games and figure out what I've broken there. Um, but first, we have to talk about Lee Chess and how they've introduced this new bot API and um, uh, some anonymous or I uh, pseudonymous um, user. I don't not too intimately familiar with them, but I probably should learn more about them. Shale Croxy uh, created this excellent, wonderful, fantastic uh, Python-based library for you to hook up any chess engine uh, to the Lee Chess uh, server using their bot API. So, like, this is caught on like wildfire. Um, that like everybody wants to start using it. Uh, in fact, I should have started with this. Hey guys, I really like to create my own bot, but I've got no programming knowledge, so is this hard to do or is this actually pretty easy? And if it's easy, could you explain how to create it? So yeah, we're getting some requests of this form too, which is pretty funny. Saying, you know, um, <laughs> they're, they're so excited about this new bot thing. Um, they don't even know what it's about, but they know they want to be part of it. That's how exciting it is. But to answer his question, I can't just leave him hanging like other people might have done. They did their best to try to answer the question. I did my best here. I think between all of us, we all did our best to try to help him. Um, um, I explained, here's how agile software development works. You make progress, and then you make more progress. And that's agile software development. Um, so, yeah, if you want to make your own chess engine, this is a recipe for doing it. Just make progress. Uh, you don't have to do it all at once, but if you figure out how to take a big problem and divide it into smaller problems, and then assess whether or not you're capable of addressing the smaller problems, um, that's a useful skill not just for software development, but for life in general. Okay, so yeah. Good life advice there, although you don't have to do everything that way. Um, in some cases, it's not okay. Anyway, um, yeah. So I give them a link. Here's how you make software. If you're if you're kind of familiar with how to make software, here's what you do for a chess program. You figure out what's a chess board, what's a chess piece, what's a chess move. How do I make something that makes all the legal moves? And then if you have the gumption to do anything more than that, have it make random moves and call it uh, declare victory at that point. Because um, really, anything beyond that is just a whole lot of work and very difficult uh, to do, an experiment that's been a th done a thousand times over. Um, at some point, I do intend to chronicle my own experiences with this, and I've got all the CVS repositories to back it up. But nobody's that interested in my own silly little uh, excursions. That's the word I'm looking for, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, people are excited about this bot API thing. I submitted a number of pull requests, several of which were accepted. This one um, I submitted, and then shortly thereafter I discovered I was having some problems. And like this library is way more complex. Um, Give you some idea of where what this is about. Lee Chess released a new API, meaning anybody could connect to the site if they could write a program to connect to the site using this designated API that tells the whole world, hey, I am a bot, I am using the bot API. 
I'm using this nice convenient interface that um, programs can use to communicate with other programs and instead of writing something that like hits uh, clicks the mouse and then moves the cursor about the screen and such this actually communicates directly with leeches it's wonderful it's amazing it allows any program to interface with leeches you could make uh, if you make your own program and you hook it up to a chess board and then on the other end you hooked it up to the Lee chess server you would be able to communicate moves from your board through your program to the server if you could figure out how to do that um, but this Lee chess API gives you a nice way to submit commands to the server directly instead of having to click a mouse and move it about or type things on a keyboard or whatever um, so that was what Leechess produced. Leechess Bot is a convenient wrapper for that API, so you don't have to write the entire program yourself. This does most of the heavy lifting of figuring out how do you authenticate with the server, um, and how do you submit the given commands with the given structure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is actually an intermediary between um, the Leechess API and the Python chess library. And the Python chess library developed by Nicholas Ficus um, can connect to any kind of chess engine, which is an X board or CECP chess engine communication protocol engine or a UCI universal chess interface engine. And 99.999 whatever percent of chess engines that are out there follow at least one of those two protocols so you don't have to um ah i should read i should show some sort of figure really the wiki here could probably benefit from having a figure of well there's nothing in the wiki sorry about that but yeah this is a way to yes you know, there needs to be a picture a picture is worth a thousand words but basically leeches connects to this library this library connects to the Python chess library. The Python chess library connects to a chess engine that follows either the XBoard CECP or the UCI protocol. If you communicate with either of those two protocols, um, chances are you can interface with like 99% of chess interfaces out there too. So there's tremendous incentive for people who write chess software to follow a specification so they can communicate with a front end and not have to write their own front end, although some people do that, and then find that they can't communicate with anything else, which is kind of sad, and those programs are generally forgotten. But some of them, um, the developers put in enough design and development effort to actually make something uh, that people actually use, which is quite impressive to me. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the middle layer of all those layers. Um, and I took this library and enhanced its capability of communication with the Python chess library, which indirectly communicates with my engine, the multivariant Stockfish engine. So what this means is that now my engine could play atomic chess, connecting to Python chess, connecting to Lee chess bot, connecting to Lee chess. Um, so you can go out there and find my chess bot out there. Why don't I go show how you do that? You go to players here, you type in Godel Escher bot, and there we are. And that's the bot that I'm running uh, out there in Antarctica, but not really, but I think that's funny, and I saw other bot developers doing that, so I thought it would be fun to do. Um, there's the URL for my chess engine. Uh, you see that it really doesn't have the highest rating because I'm running it on um, affordable cloud platform. So um, you can think, uh, in fact, why don't we go plug that while we're at it? Let's plug all the things. Um, <laughs> yeah, this one. So, yeah, we're using affordable cloud based hosting. Um, meaning that we're not connecting like out of my basement or something like that we're connecting directly from the cloud to the other cloud the leeches cloud so yeah i hosted the relay chess server 
uh, an affordable cloud-based toasting at OVH. For like 10 bucks a year or something, you get a, a machine that has one CPU. And it's wonderful, and it's great, and it's amazing, and I did it. Still have to go back and make the Relay Chess site work better. Um, still having some issues trying to authenticate with OVH at the moment. Trying to, anyway, that's a different issue. We're not even going to go there right now, but uh, yeah, feel free to... Um, you can host your own software in the cloud for minimal expense if you're really that dedicated to it. So I figured, you know, I got the Relay Chess server out there. You could probably run a Stockfish engine and still run Relay Chess at the same time. And if not, maybe I'll just have to expand my cloud. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but yeah. Um, so that's the bot API. And I submitted several patches. This one I just mentioned a minute ago, I was having some difficulties with this. Um, got a little bit spooked here when I saw this in my log file. Uh, like, oh gosh, goodness gracious, what do I do about this? Um, and uh, this, so this happened after I did some takebacks. I didn't have any idea what was going on here. And I thought, you know, maybe this change that I made, even though it's like the simplest change in the universe, you're just adding only send that we're playing 960 if we're actually playing 960. Um, thought that would be pretty simple, but in my testing I saw an error and I panicked and I'm like, you know what, I'll come back to this later after all the other things have been tested, submitted, um, and either accepted or rejected, I'll come back to this, I promised. Well, it turns out all my other patches got accepted. And they're on um, Leech's bot version 0.8 or something at the moment. So I have to go back and fulfill my promise of testing this stuff out and figuring out what in the world's going on here. And that's what we're going to do right now. So sorry for the long introduction. Um, we're going to make some progress come heck or high water. So um, our inspirational quote for the day. You will experience a strong urge to do good, but it will pass. Yeah, we'll see about that. You're just a cow. What do you know? Uh, so that's cow say, um, connected to the fortune, fortune cookie generator for Linux. All right, so what branch am I even on at the moment? UCI Chess 960. Let's check out the master. Um, so just to give an idea, uh, here's the two repositories I'm using um, for fetch and for push, or rather for download and for upload. Um, these are the URLs that are being used. Um, uh, occurs to me, I could probably, <laughs> I never thought about this, but for fetching, I could maybe use the HTTPS uh, URL and not have to authenticate. I feel like a terrific dum-dum from having used git for several years and only figured that out just now. But anyway, that's what I get for not explaining things or thinking things through until just now. Foresight, uh, it's not 2020, hindsight is. Um, so yeah, this is the URL we were just looking at on GitHub. This is my own fork of that. Um, so I just checked out the master branch from origin. Uh, and if I pull, this will get the latest updates. Um, evidently that pulled in something. And if you really want to see what uh, is in the log, here's what's in the log. Great stuff, really. Um, forgot that that would expose a U email address. Please don't email people directly unless they asked. Um, anyway, so... Now I want to check out my Chess 960 branch, which I called UCI Chess 960. Uh, rebase it upon the latest changes. Get diff master shows you this is what I've changed. This should look familiar. Um, so we're going to push this again. Um, uh, so there we go. 
any second now and there we go and that's uh, forced update and then here we are over on my machine uh, I'm sorry uh, over in the cloud don't know how I got that mixed up um, oh this bot is actually running let me stop it uh, whoops CD change directory into leeches bot um, get check out master get pull gets all the latest changes from the master branch get fetch on my repository, get check out um, my chest 960 branch. Okay, so we've got all my latest changes included here. Um, uh, so we can start up the service, or rather if we're just testing stuff out. I mean, really, I should use my test configuration, but where is the fun in that? We're going to do it live. Um, yeah, instead of doing things using the system service capability that I've been, I'm using system D to do user services that are monitored by the system D um, module uh, that takes care of logging and restarting processes and starting them up when the machine starts up and so forth. But if I just want to run the standalone, just type python main.py. Python is actually an alias for Python 3. Note that at the end of 2020, maybe the beginning, I don't remember, Python 2 is going to be dead. It's going to end, uh, It's going to enter the end of its service life and no longer be supported. Everybody will be using Python 3 in a couple years. I'm using it right now. Python's an alias for Python 3, not for Python 2. So, ah, welcome to GoToLesherBot. You're now connected to leechus.org and awaiting challenges. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna see if I can get this spooky error message to show up in the log again, which showed up last time when I did some take backs. So this might take a second to fire up. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it takes so long to initialize, but um, there we go. I also don't see a move logged here, so I guess the logging is a little more sparse than I would have expected. So if I go like four moves in, and then I take back three moves, uh, and then play a move, or something like that, um, I should be able to observe a similar error to what I previously observed. See, I want to go back a few moves now. Oh, I forgot the bot does not auto accept take backs. I have to actually manually do this. I don't know why this changed. Um, this used to be excellent and amazing and fun that um, it would just auto accept the take backs. But now, I don't know. I guess that's still in the works or something. Um, so for now, I'm forced to log in and manually do the take backs so we can do that here's a take back you get a take back you get a take back everybody gets a take back all right we're just gonna keep taking moves back um, and all right so now I'm going to play bishop c4, and we'll see, do we get that big spooky error message? And indeed we do! Check that out. Alright. Does this cause the, uh, the engine to reboot? Well, so there's a reproducible use case. It might not be the simplest, shortest, most clear, concise example, or the SSCCE for the problem. Um, but yeah, check that out. Um, I got it to go kablooey. I did not expect this would still be an issue. Um, okay. Is the game still ongoing? The game is still ongoing. Okay. Now... I thought that there were some new error recovery mechanisms that were 
part of the latest API here. I'm sorry, the part of the latest library code. Apparently, I made a faulty assumption. Hmm. Well, I am so confused. A 400 client error, bad request for URL. Um, not sure what that refers to. Um, that's kind of amazing that so many different errors occurred here. Why don't I just keep taking back until we can abort this game? Um, and then take the engine offline. Or rather, log out. We're so close to being able to hit the abort button. And there it is. All right. Uh, and then we terminate. That way other people cannot challenge us. Since there is no way to reload the configuration at runtime. Um, yeah. So, that was exciting, right? Um, let's see. I did get a notification as, as my bot account. I'm not sure what for. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, somebody had posted in the forum, where do I start? And they posted it as a bot account. And as my bot, I issued a challenge in the most dramatic possible manner. So, that was good fun. Uh, uh, the, like, the other bot's like, oh, okay, I'll be back. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I get a 400 bad request. Well, I guess because none... Well, first of all, parenthesis on here, that can't possibly be part of the thing that got sent, right? Um, that parenthesis has got to be decoration for the log file purpose. There's no way that was actually part of the URL, right? Um, I'm sure this URL as a whole is still bad because none is not a move. Um, you had all these errors attempting to print the attempting to parse the principal variation. The um, so yeah, the PV the principal variation did not parse correctly for how many variations? Apparently, a lot of them. Um, I guess this is to say that takebacks don't work. Um, now, I thought there was another, I'm sorry, that was use case one of two. Um, so that correlates to the first time I saw this kind of thing. But most recently I observed this in Chess 960. Um, let's see, so here's my Chess 960 game if I remember correctly. Uh, I can pop that in my address bar, and a game does not exist. Just kidding, evidently. Um, so yeah, I can't... Hmm, not sure what happened to that game. It must have been cleaned up by now. It removed because, like, we ended up aborting this game. Um, let's see, do we have more information about... Yeah. Oh wait, no, this was with all the takebacks, and that was the one we aborted. But I have separately observed something quite similar for um, 960. Um, okay. So, I'm not sure what happened here. But what I need to test is not this particular takeback thing which still exists, and I didn't think still existed. Um, but I need to test whether or not I can play a 960 game against uh, Go to Lesher Bot, and whether that's going to cause any havoc for our log. Um, so let's try this again using Python bot or use UCI. No. Using Leeches bot 
um, version 0.8. All right, we're gonna challenge this to some good old chess 960. Um, and just play some moves. First of all, move zero, no errors. Um, okay, castle on move one, no error occurred. Okay, what if I take back? And what if I'm silly enough to accept my own take back? Uh, I need to be able to find my game, don't I? Alrighty, I think we found it. Let's accept the take back. Uh, we still have not asked the engine for a move. Um, it is kind of funny how each take back takes back half of a move. Um, let's castle again. And yeah, it's gone ballistic at this point. Um, let's see, it's got king, queen, castling rights, and the king is, I'm sorry, this is still the chess 960 position. Okay, so this particular message doesn't lose the castling rights. Does it respect the fact that I've already castled? Um, what's going on up here? Oh no, check that out. Oh, that's a hint. That's a red flag and a half. Um, yeah, I'm going to win on time. No, I guess the moral of the story is that my bot just can't accept takebacks at the moment. Um, and this might have to do with... Um, well, let's scroll all the way up to the top and see just where this first broke. Um, so, illegal move... Wait, H eight G six. Um, hmm, that's interesting. You know, that top rook or a top rank has knight bishop rook one. One being an empty space. One being a count of the number of adjacent empty spaces in a row. Um, this Forsyth Edwards notation you read left to right the same way that you would read a chessboard. Um, let me flip this. So you read it square one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, etc. Each rank is broken by a sl uh, each rank is separated by a slash. So when it says NBR one, etc., that means knight, bishop, rook, empty space one, bishop, queen, rook, knight. That's the top row. Eight pawns. Then eight being the count of empty spaces that are on this third rank. And you'd say eight and eight and six n one and p p p p p p p and n b r k b q r one would be the first part of the F E N designation for this position. Um, so the nice convenient thing about this. Um, is that uh, it's pretty easy to type out what a position is. If you want to quickly set up a position, if you know how to type this, you can get pretty far. If you don't know how to type this kind of string, um, you can feel free to, instead of eight, feel free to type eight ones. Just let any empty space be a one. You could type one, 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 et cetera, et cetera, until the cows come home and such. But um, and you can see how the position gets set up that way. Um, but yeah, after the take back series, wait, take back sent, take back accepted, take back sent, take back accepted. Oh, I see. One of these is the chat room. One of these is um, the player chat. I'm sorry. One of these is the player chat room. One of these is the spectator chat room. Uh, the bot. <laughs> Uh, has visibility to both, I guess. Uh, well, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, I guess it's kind of on the honor system that you wouldn't take advice from the... Okay. Anyway, uh, I forgot. that, that That's actually kind of a funny feature. Um, don't abuse it, guys. Don't abuse it. People abusing things is why we can't have nice things. Um, but yeah, this has a way of 
interacting with the audience as well as one to communicate directly with the player. Uh, the words take back sent and accepted and so forth appear in both chats and appear in both uh, chat streams here. Um, so our error occurs in this position where it's saying it's white to move and HAG6 is illegal and basically every move is going to be illegal in this position because black has no king because we have a one in the top row in, in place of where that king used to be. When I castled on move one um, that got encoded d8c8 as it should have um, but the way that move executed was anything but correct. Um, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. It's kind of weird to me because like it's saying that uh, King, or I'm sorry, Knight Bishop Rook so it's saying like that square is already occupied I don't care that you moved your king there this isn't a 960 game basically and part of the library code um, after I'd done the take back and undone it oh, I'm sorry the undo uh, did not properly uncastle I'm not sure if that's the only undo issue like we saw there was this other big likely there's just some problems with how leech a spot consumes uh, the input stream and how it tries to undo moves where things don't undo properly. But as long as you don't do take backs, everything seems to work, I think. And to prove that, and to do so in the most dramatic possible fashion, I'm going to start the bot and not look at the code. And we're just going to play a game. Uh, I go adjust the board geometry while we're at it. So you can see the entire board. Sorry if some of this looks kind of ridiculous. We're going to rematch and see if we can take it down. Because we can't, but we'll try. Uh, let's go into Zen mode. Because, you know, that's going to make all the difference in the world here. We're going to defeat this like no bot's ever been defeated before. We just have to defeat Stockfish. I mean, how hard could it be? Um... So, yeah, I think... Oh, God. Well, um... That's embarrassing. Okay, I've got compensation, maybe? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. I suck. I'm so worried about the clock there. And the fact that Leech Us times you out if you don't move so quickly and then just on move two I played eh, under the force of inertia um yeah I have some dignity I'm gonna resign that okay I think it's fair to say that it works um alright better yet here's how we prove that it works um wait I wanna take the URL the first eight characters of the game URL. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there. I'm going to take that much. Uh, verify that if I load that URL, that's the public one that doesn't have, like, my session ID in it. Ah, uh, looks good to me. Ha, ha, ha. Ah. Uh, it defeated me in three moves. Um, okay. Well, that was embarrassing. Um, so, yeah, I think it works. So, that's uh, Leech a Spot. I don't have any other pull requests out to them. My other pull requests have been accepted by now, so it's just cool. Uh, here you see features under consideration. Some people are trying to make it easier for Windows users to use the software. Um, some people are working on compatibility with uh, Xboard or Chess Engine Communication Protocol engines. And some people are working on supporting opening books. So all of those are way more advanced and complicated and stuff than the little thing I did which, okay, maybe it is sufficiently advanced, but it's just like four lines of code. Um, 
copied actually I didn't even write these four lines of code. That's how good I am, or how lazy I am. Um, let's see, where did I get that from? Python chess. Let's search for Python chess. Um, hopefully this will get us back to GitHub. Uh, GitHub project stars. Oh, goodness. Where is the GitHub thing? Is this it? No. All right, we're going to search for this on GitHub. Um, oh, actually, I can find this. Python chess. I know where it's at. I just didn't want to have to type out the whole URL. But here we are, Python chess. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Where did I borrow that code from? This is so full of documentation. And then all the code works, too. It's like... How do you get to be such a god at programming? I don't get it. Well, it's not programming, it's software engineering. And, like, it's the most popular chess uh, software uh, library that's out there. And it's fantastic, and it's very well maintained, and things are done right. Um, but also this tends to lead to an effect where... Um, I'm still looking for it because I copied those four lines of code. Um, okay, here we are. Here's like set option UCI chess 960. Um, oh, here we are. Here we go. Here we found it. Um, and the sad thing is, like, I had written this first and then came here. Um, and then saw there was this way of invoking a chessboard, and I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. And then I just read through the rest of the documentation and felt terribly embarrassed that um, I could just copy these four lines of code, which I have used before and forgotten that I've used. And then I see this again, and I'm like, oh, right. There is a way out of the board to extract the 960 flag. I had spent, I don't want to admit how long, trying to remember or figure out how do I get this flag out of the board object, and whether variables in Python are protected or private or public and whatever, and can I expect it to be set here, and could I, even if the board is extended, and if it's some other kind of board, like a Racing Kings board or a... Um, some other kind of board, could I still get this? Yes, you can still get this flag. This code will compile and run no matter what your board is, no matter what your chess variant is. Um, so yeah, the solution was here the whole time. And I'm a terrible... I don't know. My efforts at being lazy um, uh, either were not good enough or were too good, or I don't know. Because if I put forth the effort to look up the documentation, I would have found this. And I thought, you know, I don't need the documentation. But then later on I came back and I'm like, yeah, actually I kind of do. Um, <laughs> but the answer was here the whole time. Yeah, right. There are ways to encapsulate things in Python, but default... By default, they're exposed, as is made obvious by this code. I was, uh, I'm so embarrassed. But anyway, so these four lines of code um, are my contribution that I copied from this one file into the other file, and all the code just works somehow, and it's amazing. Uh, you can help object in Python console too to figure. Oh. Oh, right. You can tell that I'm, like, the world's best Python developer here. But, yeah, thanks, Vish. That, that is actually brilliant advice. Um, where I should use help instead of print. Um, yeah. Okay. Or dir. Okay, that's cool, too. Professional Python developer. No, not really. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, my contribution was copying those four lines of code from this example 
into uh, the Lee Chess Bot library where they belong. Um, so I'm just astounded. Like so much documentation. It's amazing. Like how the hell does he keep this up to date? This is, and then he's got examples, uh, tests, like tests for everything. It's like this is just simply amazing. It's no wonder everybody uses this library. It, I wish, like, I could be half as good as that. That's just, like, how do you keep on top of all of this? It's, and it's one dude. It's uh, Nicholas Ficus. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, that's, so my contribution to Lee Chessbot was, um, that as well as getting, uh, the code that invokes the variant chessboard, uh, to invoke it with the correct parameter, which took an incredible amount of elbow grease to figure out what was the right way to connect the Lee Chess API to the Python Chess API and do some translation in between and get the variant names right and figure out you don't want the key, you want the variant name because Lee Chess calls variants one thing and Python Chess calls them another, but if you use the full name of the variant, those do match up. So, um, oh, so, okay, just in summary, um, whoops, that's not it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Can I get back to Lee Chess Bot? Yeah, there's other programs out there that call them Lee Chess Bot and Lee Chess Cheat Bot and all kinds of other nonsense. But the point here was that um, I was testing um, my latest change, actually my third latest change. Um, I submitted when th this was still Lee Chess Bot 0.3. Today we're up to 0.8. Um, See, here's my code. Here, at somebody's suggestion, I got rid of some code that I duplicated a few places because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, yeah, so this is when you set up the board. Also, communicate to the engine. I'm sorry, when in the engine you're communicating from the chess board, from Python chess, um, this is all still using Python chess, but when you're telling Python chess to tell the engine what the board position is, first make sure that the engine is playing the correct variant. Yeah, there's... And by the way, none of those bots work on Lee chess. I mean, come on. We're like 10 steps ahead of you. Uh, just saying. Not that I know. I'm not even a moderator, but like... Come on. <laughs> got to step up your game quite a bit if you're going to try to cheat there. Um, so, and then this is more fun anyway. Like, why would you not use the officially sanctioned bots? Because these are the ones people want to play. Everybody will want to play your engine. Uh, your engine will have, I don't know, my gut, uh, thing is like rated somewhere between... 1800 to 2500 is that right 2300 some big number crazy house is close to 2500 and this is just running on a single core cpu um give you some idea like what's over here there's really nothing hidden um so here's my table bases uh, i got atomic chess i got giveaway chess and I've got regular chess table bases, uh, three, four, and five man. Um, so that's uh, my table bases that I've got, uh, courtesy of, oh goodness, who developed that? How do you find the TB repository? Um, oh, hang on, I know how. Get remote, remote dash V. Uh, yeah, this is developed by Ronald DeMann. Um, he's the developer of the ZZG bases. Um, I forget 
if he also wrote the code that builds the variants. I'm just terribly confused at this point because, like, I'm catching up with all of these things. I haven't had to develop anything with ZZG bases lately because um, Niklas has taken on all the fun of doing that, and I've just simply accepted his um, code merges into the multivariant stockfish. I'm very grateful that uh, he's contributing those. As much as I hate anti-chess, um, it's quite popular, and the table bases help quite a lot. And um, I really like the atomic chess, and the table bases there are pretty exciting. Um, the only reason I hate anti-chess is because like, there is no anti-chess 960, and anti-chess itself is solved from the starting position, and eventually people will. Maybe this century, maybe next century, eventually they'll get bored of it. Uh, I did enjoy it for quite a time, but then when I heard it was weakly solved, I'm like, you know, maybe uh, my time is better spent learning Racing Kings or something. Anyway. Um, yeah. You can make bots. People can play bots. You can watch people play against bots. Um, so there's your standard Lee Chess TV. Then there's the bot Lee Chess TV. It's almost always somebody playing here. Um, this takes like the top rated people playing against bots. Doesn't include variant games, don't know why not. I guess I shouldn't strongly care, but whatever. Um, yeah, well, I think the checkers and anti-chess are a little slightly different in that way, but it's funny because I actually have a slightly greater respect for checkers for gosh knows why. I don't know. I just think like a human learning that can't rely on memorization. Whereas if you like know one key move um, in the anti-chess lines, it's all over. Uh, checkers is not so easily decided, although maybe it is, but maybe it's just not practical for humans. Anyway, yeah, you can go to Lee Chess and go watch people play bots. Leela is playing with this new bot API. People are... Everybody wants to host Leela on their machine. They want to, like, warm up their basements or something. I don't know. They want to keep their engine... Or their um, CPUs as hot as possible, I guess. Or GPUs. Yeah, there are openings and stuff in Checkers. I have tried to learn a couple openings... But you make one false move in anti-chess, and it is just over, and you don't want to play the game again. But, yeah, there are traps and openings in checkers, too. But there's a lot more to calculate in those games, um, by and large. Anti-chess, yeah. I, I mean, it's a good exercise, but I wouldn't consider it a game. I would consider checkers a game. That's my opinion. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, chess is kind of um, suffering some... I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's a great diversity of openings you can select in chess. But there are some openings you can play in one false move and you'll be suffering for the next 40. And I've come back for some of those, but... Yeah, it's just not as fun as it used to be. I'm not saying it's approaching anti-chess. Um, not nearly a rate fast enough for that to be statements of that nature to be said, but there are many games we've seen where um, draws are quickly agreed or traps just spring on a player and the game's over before it started. Um, so you have to play slower time controls where you can figure things out which apparently is a bit of a drain on quite a few people. And at present, because I'm doing so many awesome chess programming things, I don't quite have time for it. Anyway, so that's Lee Chess Bot, right? Right. Okay. So now we welcome you all back, because the next thing we're going to do here... Oh, why don't I go log out of this while we're at it? Um... Uh, it's got relay chess. So, 
Exciting stuff, right? Just got through um, Lee Chess Bot. Next thing that's slated here is Relay Chess, um, which kind of sort of works. Um, had some excellent contributions from Thibaut with getting authentication using the Leechus uh, uh, authentication API stuff going. You can hear the drums playing here. God bless the rains in Africa. Oh, wrong song. All right, so yeah, you can like click this new button. Um, and you see, you can authorize Relay Chess to use your Lee Chess account. And all it wants to know is it just needs visibility to your profile. And you're like, yeah, sure, cool. And check it out, you're logged in. Um, uh, <laughs> kind of to the contrary here. We're not on Lee Chess, we're just using Lee Chess. But yeah, that's the idea, is that you can log in with Lee Chess. And now, check it out, we know who you are. We've got a session established, and the only thing you can do right now is like request to play games. Um, other logged in users can see your requests, or I think they can, I'm not even sure about that. I've been told you can see the requests if you're logged in, but you can't, like clicking on them doesn't work. The only way that games on the site currently work, and this is kind of a shame, is that both or one of the players has to be anonymous, the other person has to be logged in. I have no idea why it works that way. I'm quite embarrassed about it. Um, and yeah, I need to get this working so like multiple logged in people can play against each other. Um, you probably try King of the Hill Relay with Gravat on Thursday. Cool. Yeah, King of the Hill's a good fun game. It's the first one I tried to develop an AI for. Um, I took like the stockfish code and I'm like, gosh, you know, I could add this one extra win condition and see like can I solve this variant? Um So yeah, we get a listing of everybody who's logged in and like people can see games and it links to a Discord that I don't maintain, so I don't I mean, I could update this to point to my own Discord, but, like, until the site, like, exits beta, I probably shouldn't bother. Uh, there's the rules of the site, you know, pawns, I'm sorry, pieces, including the king, in addition to their own movement powers, uh, inherent movement from the friendly pieces which defend them, or protect them. Castling is performed only by the king and by the rook, etc., etc. All other rules of chess are observed. Exclusions and whatever apply. Don't sue us, please. All right. Um, yeah, if you have a king of the hill bot, if I just remove this one win condition, I can solve chess. Yeah, right. It's that easy. Um, but I thought, like, king of the hill chess would be solvable. I'm surprised that, like, it's just beyond the search horizon. It's, I bet Leela would have a field day um, um, mastering that. It'd, like, completely kick everybody's butt at King of the Hill Chess. It wouldn't even be close. That's my own take. Uh, I could be entirely incorrect. Maybe Stockfish would be better. I don't know. But I think it would be a hilarious contest to have. But nobody got the time to like make Leela do that. Um, you know, it takes like a ridiculous amount of GPU resources just to retrain Leela, just for that one variant. Yeah, somebody will come up with it. It's not going to happen soon. But eventually somebody will come up with ways for machine learning to um, play variants. But it's going to take a tremendous uh, investment of computation resources. And it might happen first with Crazy House, maybe, because Crazy House is so popular. Or Bug House, I don't know. Um, at any rate, let's see, where did I leave off here? Um... 
Okay, so we got relay chests over here. We've got relay chests over here. So this is the actual cloud-based site. Um, I don't. Well, I've got some local something or other. <laughs> I have to be careful what I type in here, because otherwise you guys might get like my super secret Leeches token, and I'd need to generate a new one um, that holds the secret for how to... Anyway, um, I think that's in config.js, so we can't look at that, but um, yeah, there's a Leeches token that's associated with the ability to um, authenticate using the leech s server um, I should have shown that off too oh, goodness where do I even go to do this I forget like tools no it's like a cool feature but I don't remember where you go so you have to go like profile oh and then like OAuth apps right and here's your open authorization apps um, and there's some documentation and examples and stuff um, basically you can use leeches to log in and authorize um, I forget what OAuth in some cases auth stands for authorize authorization in some cases it stands for authentication I think this is an authorization API because it authorizes people to do things with the leeches credentials as opposed to authenticating a person which would identify who that person is. However, I'm using the authorization API to function as an authentication API because, um, like, why not? Um, now, there are reasons, but do you check out the variants on the green chess? Um, yeah, like, there is what, the three player chess? There's a circular chess. I forget. I did look at that. I forget which ones most impressed me. Um, I did bring it up. I have uh, since completely blanked on it. I apologize, but. Yeah, I mean, the green chess guys could just integrate with this uh, authorization service and um, allow people to play using Lee Chess usernames, I guess, or Lee Chess profiles or whatever. So I'll, this is somebody playing with the um, this profile. This is the Mango Tra um, Travis profile. Um, and on my server... Every profile has its own relay chess rating. Um, so, um, the point here that I was trying to get to is that when I put out new game requests, um, that those should show up in the log file. So here I am on the server. Uh, wait, do I not have my script here? I'm sorry, it was back in the other directory. Um, so if I want to get, um, oh, does tail only do the top part of the log or the end of the log? Tail does just the end, the last part of a file. So yeah, there's, um, there's a client ID. Uh, you might be able to hijack my session with that, so maybe I shouldn't have printed it, but oh well. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, so you can see when sockets connect or disconnect. Also pretty cool. Um, so yeah, if I put out a new game request or a seek, then other logged in users should be able to observe the seek um, that's how it should be I'm not saying that's how it is and it probably isn't how it is but um, let's see so yeah you see I have put out a seek 5 plus 2 um, 
And this is like somewhere you'd be talking about. Oh, what were the Python things you were saying? Like help object and dir object to look directly at the object. Yeah. It makes sense that Leela continues to improve. The only thing that most discourages me about that is like her playing style is um, kind of as optimistic as mine is. Um, just that like it doesn't have necessarily the same opening knowledge that you or I have. But man, it's um, it plays some unsound moves um, that end up working pretty well. Oh, um, let's see. Yeah, there we are. So, my point is I need to now look at this server code um, and figure out what the heck is going on that, uh, I'm sorry, not this. I need to look at the socket server. Um figure out where my seeks are falling through the cracks. Oh, I had a theory the other day, and I've since completely forgotten it. And gosh, that's embarrassing. Um, hmm. So... Not sure what to make of all of this. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So, I probably need to look at handle seeks again. Wait, did I add a to do anywhere? Yes. Well, no, there are some to dos. That's not to say that I'm the one who added those. Um,. <laughs> Oh, this is great. This is like my top tier comment here. Get database user by name. Give it a name to do something. Oh, right. Now I remember the last thing I did, which was introduce tokens um, in addition to uh, session IDs to allow people using a token to do I don't remember what I was trying to do with that but the idea is like the session ID and that the token would be different values I think unless I did something terrifically stupid and I probably did um, let's see Hunts token is equal to create result. How did I do this again? Um, so we got the authorization token, and then somewhere I set a cookie. I apologize for being dense at the moment. It's been a very long time since I've had to look at this. Um, oh, that's right. So we set the session ID um, as an HTTP only property. So user scripts and uh, JavaScript can't access that session ID. Only the browser itself can. That prevents sessions from being stolen, assuming you're using a browser that works properly um, and firewalls off its um, uh, HTTP only parameters from um, parameters which can be accessed by JavaScript. And so separately, I have a cookie here for uh, what's my user ID of my logged in user. Um, and I've separately got, what was this? Why do I have this here twice? I don't even remember. Now what was this value here? The user token? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I was thinking with this. Not sure why, like, 
I don't know. User token was there from the initial development. I think it's useful to have the user ID identified in the cookie. Um, user token, I'm not so sure about the utility of. Um, in theory, I should be able to get rid of it. However, there's considerable code which still relies upon that value. Um, the most obvious of which was this function here, which gets a database use... Oh, it doesn't use the token. Something else was using the token. I don't remember what. Um, but yeah, anyway, if you have a name that starts with anonymous, um, then we look you up in the anonymous player pool. Otherwise, we look for the user in the um, user collection. I'm sorry, no, we don't look you up. This just creates an anonymous user. Um, hmm. Which, I'm sorry, creates a user object which is filled with anonymous properties and doesn't even have, like, well, any kind of token or identifier or anything like that. It's got, um, yeah, no, that's it, really. The database user for an anonymous user is empty. But what this means is if somebody created a Leeches account by the name of Anonymous, or Anonymous followed by some more characters, that would exploit a bug here. And you'd end up um, not being able to find yourself in the user collection. And that's why I say to do something better, I had to restore this function, I think, which was deleted. I mean, obviously it's um, defunct, but I forget what was consuming this that required me to have to implement this in the first place, uh, instead of just being able to use records in the user collection. I don't remember. Some of these things don't quite make sense, but I need to clean those up. Um, pardon my tiredness here. Sorry, I didn't think I'd be so tired. Let's have some water. Just before hydration bot's gonna come in and tell me to have some water. Because stay hydrated bot does stop by like every hour or so and reminds me. And I think I've been here about an hour. It certainly feels like we've been through a lot. Maybe it's just because I've been talking the whole time and not coding. I don't know. Generate a non ID. Uh, yeah, what is this for? Oh, wait, why? So there's no need to generate anonymous. Well, why can't the server just generate them? Because, like, no, because they're anonymous, that's why not. My authentication server wouldn't generate an anonymous user ID, at least not yet. It might later, but, um, but yeah, this is prone to being an exploit, so i got to improve that at some point. All things at their own priority, but, uh, what are other things i got to fix? Uh, to do unrated games, variation support with black being the first player to move. Um, anonymous user said, oh, what? This is a real thing? Did I add that comment? Because usually I capitalize the first letter in my comments. Uh, I don't see that being capitalized. Oh well, no, yeah it is. Never mind. Um, I guess in JavaScript, yeah. Anonymous user sessions which become actual user sessions. Uh, handle connect socket. It's an asynchronous function that either connects as an anonymous user or as an anonymous user or as an anonymous, okay, or as a user. Um, 
Hmm. So I've changed this. I'm sorry. Session ID has always been here. Um. Wait, if we're lacking a session ID. Okay, yeah, but we're always lacking that because um, that's an HTTP only property. That's not visible to scripts. Um. Uh, maybe that's our bug. Um, uh, so what's with the rest of this? This all reserve uh, resolves server side. Gosh, good afternoon, LC. How's it going? Um, so what do we do with the session ID afterward? Oh. Oh, that's why it wants a session ID. Okay. Um, count session is equal to await session collection find one. Okay, so I've got to think this through. Oh, I'm sorry, no, this does reside server side. Reside was the word I was looking for, not resolve. So yes, we will have a session ID server side. We don't need to have a user ID server side. Nor does it even benefit us to have one. Um, yeah, like, what was I thinking by writing this? I was not. Um, that simplifies things. Uh, else, find the session. If we're missing the session, do this anonymously. Else... Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, wait, the result there. If we're missing the user. Now, hang on. This, if we have no session, handle anonymous, else get the user based on that session's user. If that's not set, but if that is set, then handle the user whatever action with this user with this socket. Okay, this is how we process any activity originating from the user going to the socket server. Eventually fans into handle user here, which handles the user's command or request. Uh, cool. Good to hear you're fine there. Sorry if I'm bouncing all over the place. Yep, good to see ya. Um, yeah, spring's finally here. And not a moment too soon. <laughs> okay, so this is how a non or this is how um, handle connect. When is handle connect consumed? Uh, okay, it's called from handle users. That really doesn't narrow it down too much. Oh, module exports equals handle connect. Um, module.exports is equal to this particular function. Uh, I don't understand that. Oh, we connect on the socket and then have this way of handling all the kinds of activities that can occur on that socket, such as a disconnect. Um, that's it. <laughs> um, wait. I'm confused. So we've got a socket. I don't know how we obtained it. But we register a disconnector. Um, but after having registered that... I mean, that only happens on a disconnect. Um, that's interesting. So, okay, this... Something else must create 
the socket that's consu okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's very confusing. Um, grab exports here. I guess somehow things wire together in a way I'm not entirely familiar with. Oh, I'm sorry, the socket's created using the socket I.O. socket handler. Um, a third-party JavaScript library, which has a way of handling um, requests. Um, so, yeah, basically, I'm doing web development here, and I don't know, Jack, about anything here. I know how to figure things out, but it's just going to take some time. Which, I don't know. This is still a fun way to hang out and stuff, but uh, it's not the best way to be productive, I suppose. <sighs> so what files do we have in the socket server directory? We've got um, game.js, a game object. We've got handle games, handle seeks, handle users. So all kinds of request handlers um, that send responses to requests. We've got a socket connection um, data object. We've got a socket server. I don't know. And then we have our utility class. Um, and just as a reminder, this code was in large part donated by um, an anonymous developer who does know a lot about Angular. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm constantly trying to catch up with all the stuff that goes on in the back end of this. Um, and honestly, the more and more I look at it, the more I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should have just done something in Elixir instead. Or Ruby on Rails or something. I don't know. But the site kind of works. If I could just address these few last little issues, then maybe our next server could be something that's not chess-related. But could still use Lee Chess to log in. I don't know, like, if you want to make a Sudoku, Sudoku solving site where people compete on solving Sudoku, somehow you could do that. I don't know why you'd do it, but, like, you could do that and have people log in or authorize using Lee Chess, which is great. is a hydrated bot. It's supposed to remind me to drink things. Um, also, somebody's got to make a version of that that like talks about wine or beer and other such substances. Um, so here's the socket server, uh, which imports everything and then has one export, which is start server, which is a function. Um, which starts a server using socket IO and um, things that are requests that occur on that socket are sent to handle users, handle seeks, and handle games, respectively. Um, this uh, socket server does run on a single socket, so it makes sense that you'd have to handle everything on that socket. Um, um, using a single handler. So that's why we don't have like three separate handlers, because like this io.on you could probably only call once for a given port number. Um, and just to clarify, if the game's not started or anything. Uh, so I've got to figure out one of these three things it isn't quite working right. I don't know if the challenge is that like pe other people who are logged in cannot uh, see the requests, or... Well, there is a way I could test this. Now that I'm actually like kind of awake and alert and stuff, I could log in as my, my Lee Chess bot, and I could use that login to authorize, um, let's see, let me first log in on my bot, bot 
Body bot bot bot. Um, and okay, and then I could go over to real HS. Um, log in with Leechus. Authorize. And I can observe. Yes, I can see the seek. I can click on it. When I click on it, it disappears. No game is started. <laughs> I'll check that out though. In the left margin, it does appear as um, a bot. Apparently, bot is a proper title on Leechus. That's great. Um, there's no AI for go to Lesher bot for relay chess. Really, only Leela could figure out this madness. Um, what that tells me, though, is that the request from my bot to accept my seek went through. However, um, the fact that the request went through was not sufficient because um, something bad happened. Yeah, so answer seek, there's my name. Um, and then I put out another seek. So we want to look at um, how it is that answer seek could have failed now that I'm actually kind of sort of awake again. Um, so we've got handle seeks, and we've got the lobby controller. Um, this is the client side, this is the server side stuff. Um, so this is the server side stuff we need to look at. Um, answer seek. So we got this far. If not seek and request, etc. Oh right, I was looking at this the other day. Uh, what did I mess up? Var user is equal to utils get server socket by user with the socket. For missing the user, don't do anything. If our username starts with anonymous um, and it's a rated game, return because anonymous users cannot. Well, that kind of flies in the face of everything I've been saying. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's funny. To get server user, so what I heard the other day is that only anonymous accounts can accept seeks. Um, and this seems to fly exactly in the face of that, because um, this should have prevented um, anonymous users from getting seeks, and not the opposite. If name starts with anonymous, name is name. Okay. And display name is anonymous with a capital letter. Um, so, and this is checking. Does my username start with anonymous? Okay, so yeah, at least this is consistent. I don't know how in the world the player anonymously managed to accept a seek. That kind of befuddles me, but... Here we go, get all the parameters of the seek. Delete the seek out of the list, because we already have all of its parameters. Emit the update. Um, maybe emitting the update is causing the problem. I doubt it. If you clicked on your own seek, we're done. If a uh, person's name is not inside the logged in user's collection. Uh, I think there is a logged in users collection, but I could be mistaken. Um, that's weird. You're still logged in there without having the site open. Yeah, I've not gotten log out working yet. I apologize for that. It's high on my to-do list. Um, I just have not gotten to it. Um, because the seeks aren't working yet. Once seeks work, then I think logout is pretty important. Um, also I'm very confused about how to do logout. 
I know what it should do. I know it should just um, set the flag active on the session to false. And then you can collect um, the session or garbage collect it later. But in the meantime, disable any activity with that account. Uh, really what this should be checking is, does a person have a session, does the user have a session that's active? Uh, and if not, um, abort. Um, mm -hmm. So wait, get server user by socket. I've already forgotten what, oh, I'm sorry, this, does that retrieve it from the user collection? So that's not our session collection, that's just our user collection. Um, wait, no, but that's, that's the one to get a database user by name. Getting a server user by a socket iterates through logged in users. Wait. Um, <laughs> so I've got a redundant check in here. It's redundantly redundant because like, what? Like some number of milliseconds will pass um, between um, when we get the user by socket and when we attempt to um, check if the user is logged in. Yeah, we know... Oh no, this is checking if the other player, the one who issued the seek, is still logged in. Um, which is fair. Uh, if the opponent has logged out, then there's no need to play the game, otherwise we create the game. Um, but maybe I've messed something up. Logged in users should contain name. Unless, like, one of these is uppercase and the other is lowercase or something. So you have accept seek. Um, uh, here we've got a person's name and connected. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. So, logged in users. We've got logged in users with anonymous IDs, you know, because they're logged in, anonymously logged in. Um, don't think too hard about that one. We'll fix it uh, when we get a good chance to do so. Um, if a person logs out, we delete that. Well, that doesn't address the problem either. Maybe it does. I don't remember. I don't know JavaScript very well. I don't know Node. I don't know Angular. I don't know any of this. We're figuring it out, though. Um, unfortunately, yes, I don't have yet a way to uh, log out a user. I, um, I'm i sorry. No, we can see your name in the margin only when you are connected. We do have a way of seeing who's connected, but there's not a way to... Uh, expire the session just yet, but this shows online players who are who have a constant active connection to the site. Um, like if I were to um, navigate to a different page here with my bot, or just dismiss it entirely. Um, um, well, there goes that theory. Okay. Another bug has been discovered. This is working the other day. Why am I so bad at these things? I don't know. I'm always confident. Like, I'm making assumptions here. Yeah, in fact, I disconnected my bot from the site too, and it still shows in the player's online margin. I need to look at how this socket IO pulls for players who are active um because like yeah there needs to be a timeout parameter uh, or a keep alive parameter or something i need to fix that i apologize for that 
Um, goodness. Um, yeah, this is me. Like, I'm not kidding when I'm saying I'm doing it live here. Uh, with the stockfish code, I've done a much better job at improvising. Here, I don't really know so much what's going on, so um, there's a lot more guesswork here. So if things are crumbling left and right, it's because this site's still in beta. Uh, and that I haven't figured out how to best maintain this code base just yet. But we'll do it live. We'll figure it out. All things in due time. Um, so... Oh, yeah. So... What was my last question here? I was asking something about something, and I forgot what I was asking about. I know I was certainly trying to figure out what, oh, what's in logged in users. Because so there's logged in users, a non ID, and then there's logged in users, I don't remember. <laughs> We're doing it all live. It's how generally I've done things on this um, with the coding here. Um, so what populates this? One of these things has to be setting a new entry in logged in users. Um, where is the new entry set? Hmm. Oh, is it this bottom one? This utils thing? Users? No. No, that looks up a... Yeah. Where's the thing that creates the user and puts them into logged in users? Um... This code base has been pretty dormant for a year. Because I didn't want to pay the server costs and um, had other projects I was pursuing too. What we're coding is the RelayChess server. We have the ability to log in with LeeChess. We don't have the ability to log out. And that would be my top priority to fix, except also seeks don't work. So there's no way to play games on the site if both players are logged in. There's no way to log out. You can play against the computer, but where's the fun in that? Um, you can also cancel your own seeks. So at least I got one function working right. Um, but yeah, there's a number of other things, ancillary things, I have to figure out how to address. And right now I'm trying to figure out where is... Oh, there it is. Right in plain sight. Users equals dot dot dot. So this is going to be handle users. Wait, but that's an anonymous ID. Where's the one that handles... Um, say that we've got a user who's in the midst of logging in. That's not in this path. It's up a level. That's why I'm not finding it here. Um, yeah, oh, that's not it either. How? Um, okay. I mean, I'm very confused. The other thing which confuses me is I'm more accustomed to doing things using um, more enterprisey sorts of tools, like having a web portal that's uh, managed by the Apache web server or using a database where everything's stored in tables or in other various database mechanisms. So doing some web development using Node.js and Angular is about the polar opposite. It's like... I don't even know how do I get an analogy for 
doing the opposite of what you're accustomed to doing. Anyway, it's something of that nature. So here I am just trying to figure out where the heck um, something here must be setting a user ID um, Something must be adding a value into this array. And I see where you do this for an anonymous ID. Um, I had just assumed that logged in users were populated somehow. Oh. Um, but. I guess maybe this upgrades. Um, an anonymous user into a active user. Maybe that's what's going on. Oh, also I should link to um, the site itself, although probably I should be linking to the GitHub where all the code is hosted because um, even though you can go to the site and click on things, I wouldn't call the site fully functional even though I'm working on it. I'm being just really slow in working on it because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, equals user ID. So this has got to be our code for uh, if user ID is part of logged in users. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. New connection. Oh, I see. Else, if we've just connected a user. Oh, okay, this does the assignment. So we have to have a user object prior to uh, this action. And I did see these connected messages appear in my log. So, and these do get published. Um, so that's cool. Um, so now what? Now that I know that logged in users is populated using a user ID and wait, here we have user.name and here we have user ID. Um, I'm going to say that user.name might be ambiguous. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this. User ID should be less ambiguous as an identifier for something that should appear in a log file. Uh, Okay, so I've restarted the server. I'm going to force refresh here. And we'll see that I'm the only person who appears in the logged in users array. Um, and how did that magic work? Why didn't I have to click the login with Lee Chess button again? It's because. Um, I don't know. Oh no, because my sessions are persistent um, across site. site restarts. Uh, I have a server-side session collection. Um, so, okay. Ah, there's my ID. Now we have answer seek, and this appears to look like a name. Um, I think that was the disconnect. So now I'm logging the user ID, which is the key for logged in users. Um, but logged in user seems to always be. No, sometimes it's keyed on ID, sometimes it's keyed on name. Oh my god, how does anybody get anything done with this code? Um, so. 
Um, so how do we do this? Let's clear and so if player.name is in logged in users. Oh goodness, what do I do? Oh my goodness. We're going to make everything use IDs, but I'm also confused about what server user dot underscore ID is about. We have user ID, we've got name, we've got server user uh, underscore ID. Um, and then we've got to generate UUID uh, as part of uh, and then here we're looking up a user not by name, but by username. Um, this just seems like a recipe for disaster. Uh, so, seeks are accepted based on a username attribute. What are the attributes of a seek? I think I'm starting to see all the dissonance all at once. And it's making my head hurt. Um, so this has a user, a time, an increment. Game seeks user dot name. Now the user has other attributes, right? Like an ID. Why don't I just key everything at ID? Why would you not identify using the identifier for everything? It's like two people could have identical names but different ID values. If you really want to be ridiculous. Oh, underscore ID is the attribute. Okay. Also, I'm not sure why it's called underscore ID in JavaScript or in Node. Um, so, we can have the name starting with rated, but. Here we have username starting with anonymous. If name is equal to username, accepting your own seek. Well, here now we're going to key this on the ID. Um, Request.seek. Oh, okay. Um, now really, if, if I were being... You should theoretically be able to have multiple IDs of seeks, and a person should be able to seek more than one seek at a time. We're not getting that fancy just yet. Um, but... Um, but yeah, I'm thinking I'm preferring to use... Um, ID instead of name. Hopefully this will work better. Um, if not, oops. So if the player making their, wait, what name is, oh, hang on. Check if the other player is still online. So, um, I'm sorry, no, that is correct. Um, otherwise, create the game. Here we have name and username. Um, ay, ay, ay. so. name. Should probably be the first thing I grab out of here. Like that. Name, user.name, uh, time, increment, and rated. Alright, and then we send out uh, right, right, right. Um, get color for username. So that's all keyed on username instead of user ID. I'm not going to touch that at the moment, but games will be keyed 
um, user underscore ID. Um, wait. Oh. Delete the seeks of uh, the challenging player. Or, sorry, the answering player. Um, whatever. So, yeah, that cleans up our seeks. Um, oh, that is an awesome emote. Wow. I forgot that somebody did that. I forgot if Zug went ahead and made that or somebody contributed to him. But yeah, that's an excellent emote. Um, okay, so I think I've stopped being a potato here. Um, and probably have just gone straight out and broken everything. But in the off chance that it's not broken, it all works. Um, so there's a possibility that I might have done it right. I can't get too optimistic just yet. But um, let's celebrate, because why not? All right, so I think that's, let's see, user.name still being used in a few places, because I guess it makes sense to do so in those cases. Um, like when we're creating a game, for some reason we're, well, I guess it makes some sense to do that with the user's names. Um, wait, at some point though, create game random, um, it's going to need, uh, the user's IDs as well. Um, so here's create game random, right, toward the bottom. Um, <laughs> math.random is less than a half. Um, well, we'll see how accurate that is. Uh, create game. Creates it up here. New game, white, black, etc. Doesn't matter whether you're black or white. It's something we've learned um, some decades ago. Um, so, new game, generate game ID, how do we notify the players about the new game? Well, no, I, nothing's wrong with the random thing, it's just that people have been observing that when a authenticated person and an anonymous person are playing... Uh, the authenticated person always gets white or something, or maybe I have that backwards. It looks fine. It's just I'm super skeptical and spooked by everything at present. Um, and I just need to see some things work for once. Um, I did add some more logging to this, like that console.log statement, which I think could prove useful in the long run. Um, let's see, generate game ID, new ID, active games, return new game. All right, which is returned by create game random. So, um, so we get the new game. Oh, this is the part where we admit, oh my goodness, I'm stupid. Um, yeah. The reason we're getting the color for username is so we can emit um, that this game's been created to the two players. Well, that wasn't so hard. Okay. So, stop. Oops, wrong directory. Stop.sh. Start.sh. Status. Alright, it's logging. Um, socket server started and running and stuff. Force refresh. Hey, look, we're one for one. We appeared in the left column. If I hit the button, we're two for two. If I click this, it doesn't disappear. Did I just break everything? 
Um, <laughs> right, so that when it says answer seek, it needs to say answer seek with the ID of the seek, not the name of the user who produced the seek. <sighs> so that's a JavaScript on the front end, which does not require a server restart. Um, mm -mm, yep. Answer seek. Okay, so here we are. Index.html. Wait, the seek has a name? Why was the why does the seek have a name? Why just who's naming their seeks? Oh my goodness. Okay, it's great. You have a name in one file and you just let name proliferate all over the place and okay, as long as you're consistent that's fine. But if you don't add a comment like in any of these files explaining what the fuck you're doing, oh my goodness. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We'll get through this. Um okay, what creates the seek object, because now I'm deeply skeptical skeptical about what a seek is. Um, what creates a seek? Is there a seek class? Uh, socket on seek. Um, okay. I mean, I could search for name. Searching for name would find it, right? Okay, handle seeks. I'm going to assume that handle seeks is not about, like, seeks to find door handles, but it's about the handling of a seek. I'm assuming it's going to be controller for a seek, as opposed to something that attaches a handle onto a seek. Thank you, stay hydrated, bot. Why weren't you here an hour ago? But thank you. We're going to have some water. Alright. Sorry if that made too much noise. That was me setting my glass down. Um, a seek apparently has a name. I'll be damned if I can figure out why you would name a seek. I mean, on online Go, it makes some sense. It functions as a description on OGS to explain this is a friendly, casual match. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to go like full evil with this. Um, wait. No, this isn't me creating the seek, though. This is an existing game seek. Okay. Where is... Oh. Okay, I was going to say, I was going to set the value of the variable name even though it's a constant, let's just set this parameter to value.id. Um, if id is in game seeks. Oh, hang on. Okay, that's why I've got a name. Oh, but that's the. Okay. That's the name of the seek, not the name of the player who issued the seek. Okay, so fine. Name there serves as a convenience so we don't have to do another lookup later. But somebody could forge this value. Uh, it's not a very good value. Um, but that's uh, answering a seek as opposed to creating a seek. Because um, surely at some point you've got to create a seek, right? And you'd have to have like an increment or something to 
Okay, there's game.js. Yeah, seek is not defined in game.js. Um, hmm. How do I create a seek? Why don't I go look at the front end to try to guess how the back end controller works? Because, you know, I've never had to do that before. Um, yeah. No, you're right that the name um, attribute is the name of the user who created the seek. Um, the challenge there is um, IDs provided by the OLAF um, okay, well, this isn't a challenge just given what we know about leeches and that they're not evil. But um, the theoretical challenge is that uh, your third-party OAuth provider might um, allow names to not be the same thing as the ID values. Um, so, like, when you're authenticating with LeechS OAuth, your LeechS account has an ID, and it has a name, and it has some other kinds of stuff there. Um, but there's always the possibility that the name could get desynced from the ID somehow. And so that's why I'm seeking to use the ID across the board, is in case anything stupid happened to the name or, like, I don't know if you added a title to the name, if you changed the title for a name, if I don't know all the things you could do to mess this up, but I'm not making name a key value. I'm not that crazy. Um, I might be pretty crazy, but I'm not crazy enough to make my key values equal to uh, name values. Because eventually that's going to burden me if I let that happen. I want a key on ID values whenever possible. That is to say, um, dataless, although not really, but the closest thing that we have to a dataless key is the um, lowercase version of the username. I know it's been said that you can't change your name, you can't change the case of your username and all that on LeechS, but should that ever change, we want to be resilient to it. And for us to be resilient, we have to do things um, following the standard of using identifiers. Um, anyway, I need to find where the heck a seek gets created. Um, it's got to be here somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. okay, wait, um, game seeks user ID, it's, oh, wait, this is what creates it now. Duh, I just changed that. Oh my goodness. I just edited this code. Just like five minutes ago. I was here changing the primary key of this. Changing the key of game seeks from uh, name to ID. And I s uh, hey, we've got a user attribute, and that's great, and look at all this other stuff we got. User is the full fledged user including its ID, including its name. Um, so, that's what creates the seek. There's no create seek function, there's no seek class, it's just plain old JSON. Um, so if that's what creates our seek, then um, how does the front end interface with that? Um, 
somewhere we emit to the front end uh, seeks update. Emit, emit seeks update. Um, oops, apparently that's in the utils class. That's probably what's confusing me the most. Alright, so this is how it gets published. It gets published with a name but not with an ID value because publishing it with just a name and not an ID saves on bytes that go over the wire. Yeah. Um, which, cool, but I'm not saving the bytes. I'm all about using up those bytes. Um, all right, so ID is equal to seek. Believe it or not, because seek is the key here. Um, probably should be called seek ID. Uh, you could also call it ID. Like, you could call it anything. Here. Just so I don't lose my mind trying to figure this stuff out. Um, I'm going to set the ID value equal to ID. Hopefully that's not too difficult for me to understand. Now there's the question of having seek underscore, which is an excellent variable name, if I do say so myself. Uh, no. We're not calling it seek underscore. We're going to be as concise as is reasonable to do. Um, there we go. So now we're able to emit seeks. So, um, stop the server, start the server, refresh again, create a seek, cancel the seek, just kidding, it doesn't work, um, but I at least have a very strong suspicion as to why, and that's because I've not yet changed the front end. Why would I expect this to work? Um, because I am impatient, that's why. Um, Alright, seek.name. Uh, let's see. For seek in relayhs.seeks, answer seek. Seek.id. Um, ng class indicates whether or not it's your own seek. When we have other ways of identifying the logged in user there, but we don't need to bother with that right now. The more important part is that when the page renders, um, there we go. Okay. So, um, I don't have to make all those changes. This is in a copy of the code that doesn't push to GitHub. I'll have to make all those same changes locally. But theoretically, now I've got seeks keyed by ID value. So, Theoretically, if there were a logged in user, I can do this with the bot. I can prove this out. This is not going to take an eternity. This is just going to require me to log in, do a force refresh, and accept the seek. <laughs> oh, my opponent sees it and I don't. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, how did this happen? What happened? What in the world is that? What is this not? Okay, okay. That's an error. Um, it's not a coding behavior. This is um, an error, actually. 
Okay. Why am I relieved to see that that's an error? Because, like, I could not understand why only one player would see that. You might be able to figure that out. I'm not that smart. Um, so, cannot read property sockets of undefined. Um, well, I'm sure one end of the stack trace is the most recent end. And the other is like the least recent or something. Um, it's socket anonymous. It handle seeks or socket server handle seeks dot js line one eighteen. Okay, just for laughs, let's take a look at line one eighteen. Ha ha ha. Okay, now what's the problem? Um, logged in user's name name now name is an attribute of a game seek um, however users are logged in by their user ID and the user ID happens to be the same as the seek ID um, so that's why we didn't find it it's because that was keying on name Get color for username can still get colors based on the user's name value. Um, but yeah, let's try that again. Uh, stop it, start it, bop it, twist it, pull it. Okay, I'm in the lobby. I don't know what happened to our game. Um, let's try that again new game here we go oh my god we got a game I can't move anything I'm gonna lose but at least it's better than last time for some definition of the word better um, cannot read property starts with of undefined um, okay great handle games line 202 uh, yeah, no, I see what you're saying about a catch block there. That's okay. You're just gonna fix the coding errors on the fly. Oh. Wait. Huh? How do we reach line 202? There is no line 202 in this file. Uh, this is in handle games where the error occurred. Um. Oh. Get database user by name game.white.name um, so that failed because socket server utils um, doesn't have a property of undefined well clearly we have, just have to change the definition of undefined um, yeah okay so undefined that starts with anonymous doesn't quite cut it um, so game.white.name is undefined. Hmm. Uh, I guess the game doesn't have a white name. I guess that's what we have to conclude. Maybe the game has a black name, but it ain't got no white. Um... Yeah, no, that expression there on the right, game.white.name, evaluates to undefined somehow. So in... Oh, this is the thing that creates the game. Um, okay. Where's the game creator? Isn't that this class? There's abort game, there's resign game... I could use that one a lot. Um, but, yeah, where's the thing to actually create the game? There's the thing for move. Here's joined game. That's pretty exciting. Um, there's game over. There's abort game.
Oh, it's in game.js. Of course, create game would be in the game object itself. Um, okay. Oh, white itself is just the second, or the first parameter to game. Um, so that must have been passed as false, or as, as undefined by handle seeks. Um, wait, what? So we have new game is equal to create game random name, user dot name, etc. Um, name is equal to data dot game seeks ID dot name. Um, so we've already established where that gets set, right? Um, that gets set at the top of uh, handle seeks. Where I'm setting user equal to, oh. Wait, there is no attribute name. There's an attribute user. So if I want the name. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm so confused. I'm getting to the bottom of this in a very confused fashion. Um, so. White, no, name, name, user dot name. So create game random takes the names, it doesn't take user objects. But then I'm later treating these as full fledged user objects. Um, Let's see, create game. No, why do I keep searching for that? Looking for game seeks being initialized here. <sighs> so game seeks does not set white, does not set black. No, I'm sorry, this is the seeks thing. This is not the games. This is the game seeks. Um, I swear I'm not confusing the fact that game and the name, or game and name have three identical letters in them. Um, Alright, so, new game is equal to create game random. Create game has a capital C. And that's defined here. Uh, create game with a capital C. That rhymes with P, it stands for pool. Um, so, new game, white, comma, black, etc. And game is defined in game. Um, Then socket server. Oh, game.js at the top of this. Um, name is equal to white. Okay. So I'm confused. Possibly I didn't set the name attribute way back in my socket server. Well, I'm sorry, not even in the socket server, but in the thing that identifies what users are logged in. Um, this name might be lacking. Game seeks ID. 
dot name. Is name a th attribute that I'm setting inside a new game seek? No, I'm setting a user attribute. Been over this like 35 times, but I've not fully grasped it yet because I'm kind of slow. So here to get the name, it'd be user dot name would get me the parameter that's defined there. Um, um, as opposed to user dot name being the user who sent the seek acceptance. All right, so restart the server once more. Um, go back, force refresh. Go back here, force refresh. Get as fresh as possible. Okay. Holy fuck. It works. Maybe. Oh my goodness. You are so getting yourself checkmated here. And by you, I mean me. I'm going to find a way to lose this with or without dignity. Check. Oh, I forgot. That king can still move. It's protected by the queen. Um, yeah, it's got a couple options here, actually. So we're going to go back this way. Um, right. And now we're going to jump the king forward. Well into harm's way. Check. Awesome. Don't know if the ratings got adjusted at all. I guess we'll find out in just a second. Eh, the ratings didn't get adjusted. That's okay. Oh my goodness. I can't believe any of that worked. Sorry for the coarse language. I just can't believe it. Um, I'm not sorry. I want to say that I am, but really, it's been an adventure here. Um... So, okay. I'm not sure why that didn't count for ratings. I don't know. Kind of glad it didn't, because that allows me to keep um, the bot as not an account that has a rating. Maybe just rated games are disabled in general. I don't know. Um, Yahtzee. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, um, I'll figure out how to commit these changes. Because this, the place where I developed all the changes does not have direct access to publish to GitHub. Because it's up in the cloud and I don't want to give it my credentials. I want it to be capable of downloading but not uploading. So I'll figure out how to develop all the changes and do so without giving you all my secret tokens that I use for this uh, authorization process. This authorizes people to use the Lee Chess profiles um, as a way to play on Relay Chess. Okay, well, um, we've been going for at least two hours because Stay Hydrated Bot has told us so. Um, I think it's time to declare success. If for no other reason, then um, your attention span cannot greatly exceed my own and I am running out. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like people can put seeks up on the site. Still can't log out. I still need to figure that out. But um, games now play, which is pretty cool. And you can still play against the computer and I've not broken this, maybe. Maybe it's broken. Well, that seems to work. Let me jinx it just a little bit more. 
Okay, how else can I jinx this? Oh, check. I forgot. That's a really nice trap. I'm not sure if that's going to get me anywhere with this bot, but, um, let's see. Check. Right. Um, just need to be a little bit more patient with this stuff here. Put the king on top of the rook to castle. Uh, okay, oh, <laughs> it's a diagonal moving rook there. Okay, I don't want to open this up just yet. Um, Haxor. Moving all the pieces in the ways they don't normally move. Alright, so... <laughs> yeah, see that? Um, I still have to fix that. You know, if I just put on chess 960 mode, that would fix it all. But, where's the fun in that? Um... Yeah, that would fix the castling bug as far as stockfish is concerned. And yeah, this king can jump across the back rook as long back rank as long as the rook defends it. So like this is practically speaking still impossible to win. Um despite my immense advantage, um my winning chances aren't really that much greater. If I could dispose of this knight, I might fare a little bit better. Right, right, right. Okay, go ahead. If you really want my rook, I'll let you have it. It doesn't want my rook. Understandable. <sighs> so, yeah, we've, we've got to beat this AI. Yeah, it's got to know what's coming to it. Still no capture. Fine, if you're not going to take... Well, that doesn't actually improve my situation at all. Fine. Okay, now you take it. I see how it is. Um, oh, the king defends this... <sighs> not impressed. <laughs> I am, but not willing to admit it. Oh, that's a pin. Okay. Let's get out of the way of that pin. Oh, dear. I've got to watch my step around this. Th oh, my gosh. Really? Go ahead. Take your grubby little pawn. Stuff it. Um, so... <sighs> Where's the draw offer button? Where's the force resignation button? I could use one of those right about now. Okay, fine. Defend your pawn. I'm going to crash through over here. And hopefully you won't pay enough attention to see what I'm up to. All right, I distracted it long enough to take the pawn. Uh, this king's still a dangerous piece. Check. Of course you check me. Oh no, really? Okay. This looks spooky. Um. But yeah, the point is, Stockfish is, like, ridiculously good at this variant. It's not even fair. It really isn't fair. Um, oh. I might have a fighting chance here, suddenly. Um... Okay, what's that? 
How do I win this? How do I win this? I guess through a superior knowledge of standard chess endgames. <laughs> it's wonderful that it actually could come down to that. Check. Maybe. If I'm not clumsy, and unfortunately I am. Oh no, am I getting mated here? That's disgusting. Here. Check. 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 Can I win this? I don't think so, but maybe at depth one here I might outmaneuver it somehow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Check. Oh, I get to pick a piece. I haven't seen this dialogue before. Okay, I declare victory. Uh, Stockfish doesn't know that this is check. And that's okay. Take that, Stockfish! If you want to play against Stockfish too, um, feel free. I don't know why you would, but it's there. Um, yeah, so player player challenges are there. Rated games are disabled somehow. I don't know exactly how. Maybe they work. I don't know. I'm not warranting that they work. Again, although there's no disclaimer on the main page, uh, the general premise is please don't sue me. Just have some fun. Please don't make me add a disclaimer. Even though really I should add one. But yeah. It's been good fun. Um, so... Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the coding. Um, just takes a lot of work to get these things going. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good night. Let's see, is there anybody that's uh, worth hosting? <laughs>